Hello, my name is Nick Wishner and I'm Artistic Director at Guildford Fringe Theatre Company. Welcome to the back room of the Star Inn in Guildford where we will be hosting our next event, a play, a pint and a pasty, featuring the brand new piece of writing, Owls in the Moss, a psychological thriller. Now in case the title of the event is not quite clear enough, I should explain. For the price of your ticket, you will be fed, watered and entertained. So I shall look forward to seeing you there in April. Um, I thought it would be nice to have a little chat with Arvid Larson, who is the writer and director of the play. Uh, thank you so much for coming down and having a chat with us today. My pleasure. First of all, can you tell us how come you are here? Why are you with Guildford Fringe Theatre Company? Well, it's because you drafted me in, Nick Wishner. Uh, we were doing a gig together in Madrid a few months ago, very glamorous, and uh, Nick was telling me about the Guildford Fringe Theatre Company and what kind of material they were looking for. And my antenna started going, because this sounded very interesting, you know, we want to play with um, only one setting, not too many actors in it, not many, too many car chases or things blowing up. <laughs> and I thought, well, it just so happens I've got something in my bag, a play that I've written. And uh, yeah, you read it and the rest, as they say, is hysterical. Or mm -hmm. historical. Or, yeah. one two. One Can you two. give us a, a, a bit of a background into your career in, in the theatre? Well, I trained in musical theatre and uh, so most of the work that I've done so far has been in musical productions uh, here, Norway, Germany, uh, I've done Jesus, Jesus Superstar, Joseph in, with his coat and uh, Tony in West Side Story and uh, yeah, it's a lot of kind of big musical theatre productions. So you've but had a, a massively successful career as an actor, what's made you... Your words, but yeah, thank I you. I think so. Well, what's made you kind of change over into the world of being a playwright? <coughs> Well, I think everyone, when you've been an actor for a long time, you sort of start looking at other things that you can do because I think the sitting around waiting for your agent to call about an audition or a job is fine when you're in your 20s, okay, when you're in your 30s, when you're nearing 40s, not that I would know what that feels like, but uh, I think you start looking at other things that you can do because you want to kind of have something in your life that you can take control of and do at your own time and not be sort of ruled by others anymore and I found that I really really enjoy the process of writing and I, I love writing dialogue I don't think I could write a novel I'm not very good at descriptive writing but I do think I know over the years of having done a lot of theatre and a lot of you know I've done a lot of workshop and new writing I know what works and what doesn't I think so I challenged myself to put that into use and see if I could actually write something that would make sense myself so Let's see if I've succeeded. So this is your first play? Yeah, it's my first play that I've finished. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about it without giving <coughs> too many of the secret details away? Oh, no, we don't want to give too much away. <laughs> um, well, it's a very kind of claustrophobic psychological thriller with t three people. Um, I mean, it doesn't, as I said, it doesn't have any car chases. It doesn't have anything outside. It's literally just these three people that get put together for, by certain coincidences and what or is it uh, in one room and uh, imagine if someone had access to all your inner uh, secrets, things you don't want to share with someone and started using it against you in a setting. How would you react? How, what kind of instinct does that evoke in us and how will we cope with something like that. It's like someone having access to your internet or to all your emails, but this is even more of secrets that you wouldn't even put on an email. So that's kind of the basis of it, and then see what happened when the explosion happened. Not literally, but yes. I can't afford explosions. No, no, no explosions. <laughs> it's all in. It's all You've in um, explained how we've met uh, uh, mm. doing the tennis gig in Madrid. You handed me the script. It was almost like you I love the Michael's. way you say tennis gig, like everyone knows what that is. The tennis gig. Uh, the 12, the 12 tennis, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, you, you kind of were almost reading my thoughts at the time because I was looking for a piece, as you yeah. said. Uh, this kind of uh, one setting, a small cast, something that would fit in a room very similar yeah. to this. And I, and I read your play and immediately knew that it was kind of work perfectly in this space. Now you've been here uh, three or four times for recalls and auditions. Yeah. Um, how are you feeling about putting it on here? Uh, I think it'd be great. I think it would really work here. It's exactly the kind of... Set. I wanted to kind of be as intimate as you can and have the audience as close to you as possible to create that claustrophobic kind of... I, I almost want them in the cabin with us. Uh, to put it, it's set in a Norwegian log cabin. 
uh, and uh, I kind of almost want them to feel that that it's uncomfortableness of being so close to these characters and to what's being unraveled on stage that that they're almost sitting at the coffee table with us, you know what I mean? So this will be great, I want them close. Sometimes you want the audience to have that kind of safe distance to where the performance takes place and, and what's happening. But in this piece, I wanted them as close and as involved as possible. Mm. They're almost like the fourth cast member. And I think in here that would work really well. Absolutely, you can't do anything but intimate in this no, space. Exactly. That's why I love it. But um, Arvid uh, trained at Guildford School of Acting. Well, did, a yes. few years back. But we won't talk about that. Um, mm -hmm. What's it like coming back to Guildford? I mean, it's very close to my heart. It's a beautiful, yeah. beautiful town. How's it been, kind of walking what? down the familiar streets? It's been amazing, actually, because I left seventeen years ago, and I think I've only been back twice since then. Before that, before now. Uh, and yeah, and just finding these venues that we've been holding the auditions and today we're in a different pub upstairs in a different pub and I had to walk down another one and every lane that I go down is like another memory lane. It's brilliant. Mm. Although when I was here, which was, well, I left 17 years ago, it was very different. It's because gone the very upmarket. Well. The schools yeah. moved premises. The schools and moved, so. But a lot of things are still, I see boots are still in the same place. And, uh, Always. Yeah. <laughs> no, is there it's, anything, it's been um, great. Before we wind it up, is there anything you'd like to add about the play coming up in April? Well, just that I'm really, really excited that it's being put on here. You're excited I, about the play or tasting the pasties? <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty good. I'll be tasting them all week. Yeah, well, I'll be coming down to do checks on them as well <laughs> to see how you um, just get your apron on. Stop <laughs> picking. Um, no, I think it'd be really exciting to, and I think uh, Guildford itself is such a, uh, has got so much art in it and so much artistic stuff going on and it's got such character and such history and I, I just think it's a great place to do anything. It's very inspirational just walking around the town and, and I think that will fit in really well with the rehearsal process and I'm really excited about coming down here too. And also, it's like coming full circle, you know, mm. without sounding corny, but it's kind of where I started my training and where I started, you know, to do my musical theatre background, but also my theatre background, and, and, and to come back here after all this time. It's, it's really, really exciting, so. Well, thanks. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for coming down no, from no, London no, to have pleasure. a chat with us. And um, we're going back to do our recalls, so the yes. cast will be announced um, maybe tonight, so maybe tomorrow. Be, have Fingers someone crossed. to read these lines that... It's, it's been going really, really well. We've had yeah. an incredible turn we, out. We're, all, we're nearly there, and the stuff that we have so far is very, very good. Very so all that's left to say is, please, please, please do come down and watch this terrific piece of new theatre. Um, I can't speak highly enough of it. To, to work with Arvid has been a pleasure. His <coughs> passion and enthusiasm is really coming through and really does rub off on me and the rest of the team. So thank you so much for that. No. Um, so please do come down. The dates are the 9th to the 13th of April at 7.30 every evening. All the booking information will come up just after this video. And please just share with your friends and spread the word about Guildford Fringe Theatre Company. And I'll see you in April. Thank you. <laughs>